So a fact that we need to know is if y equals e to the x, then dy by dx is the same thing. It's also e to the x. It's a very special function. It differentiates to itself. That's not quite what we're being asked here, because actually we're being asked by e to the kx. And here it's a very similar result, but not quite the same. It's just an extra little step. You also have to times by k. So you get the function itself, but then you times by k. This there's been a actually there's been a stretch by scale factor one over k in the x direction. That's one way of thinking about it, and it does lead to a, a different gradient. So this is the result for part A. Part B, we're told that line L is a tangent to this curve y equals e to the half x at the point where x equals two. So I'm just going to sketch that out actually. Um, it's going to look all exponentials like with a with a positive here look a bit like this and they go through one that's not that important but hey I'm just gonna add it anyway um, but the tangent at two is gonna look a little bit like this it just glances off of the curve at the point x equals two and I want to work out I'm I'm gonna want to work out or show that it goes through the origin like actually it looks like it does but I need to prove it. First things first, let's find the equation of that line. So to do that, I need the gradient of the line and I need the value of y because I got the value of x. I don't know why I wrote x there, that's, that's two. So when x equals two, sorry, let me try that again y is going to equal, oh, I should probably have said that y that is now equal to, I got a little bit of preliminary stuff, so y is now equal to e to the half x, <clears throat> and because I need the gradient as well, I need to also work out dy by dx here, so it's going to be a half e to the half x, just like I had above. So when x is 2, y is going to be e to the half times 2, e to the 1, or just e, and dy by dx, the gradient at the point when x equals 2, is going to be a half e, because I've just substituted it into here. And I'm on my way now, because now I can use the equation of a, any straight line, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Learn this really useful formula for when you know the gradient of two different points. So we've got my value for y is just this one here, y minus e is equal to a half e x minus 2. Um, and what else do I need to do with this? Well, I just need to basically work out the value of y when x is equal to 0. This is line L. So when x equals 0, y minus e equals a half e minus 2, y minus e equals minus e, so y equals 0. And we can see, therefore, L passes through 0, 0. Brilliant. We're then asked a, oh, a slightly different question. Find the coordinates of the point of intersection of the curves y equals 3e to the x and y equals 1 minus 2e to the half x. Well, this is essentially a simultaneous equation, but just with exponentials in the, in the mix. So I can set 3e to the x. equal to this because it's when the y values are the same that's going to give me the point of intersection so 1 minus 2 e to the half x and I've got myself an equation to solve let's just uh, write it so it's all on one side
because this doesn't look very nice, but actually there is something going on here. I essentially have a hidden quadratic. Let's t equal e to the half x, because t squared will then equal e to the half x squared, which is e to the x. And I, I've, got a, I've got a hidden quadratic. This is 3t squared plus 2t minus 1 equals 0. Let's see if it factorizes 3t and t. Uh, I'm going to need a plus 1 here to give me plus 3t and minus 1 here to get me the 2t and get me the minus 1. So t is equal to a third or minus 1. Let's get that back in terms of e. So e to the half x equals a third or minus 1. But I'm going to need to reject this one because, um, as you saw in my earlier sketch, the exponential is always positive. This one will also always be this will be positive. So I reject that. I've got e to the half x equals a third. Now I want to work out what x is because I'm asked for the point of intersection. So we can take um, natural log and get that half x is equal to ln a third. Now I've done this quite quickly. I've I've sort of, that is the prop that is the property of logarithms and exponentials. If I have log of base e of a third is equal to a half x, and by definition it means e to the power of a half x equals a third. These these are the same thing. They're just different ways of writing it. If you want a little bit more, then I can take, I'm just going to write it over here. If I've got e to the half x equals a third, then I can actually take natural log of both sides. This is just an alternative way of explaining it. So there's nothing wrong with me doing that. And now I can bring down the half x. using my third rule of logs, and ln e is just 1, so I get the same thing. I get half x equals ln a third. Um, and then I can then write that x is equal to 2 ln 1 third. I could even write that as minus 2 ln 3, because um, this is 3 to the power of minus 1, and then I can bring the minus down. Does it say, I didn't actually read, does it say I wanted it in any particular form? No. So I'd probably leave it like that. And then y equals 3e to the x. That's probably going to be the easiest one to sub it, in, sub it into. y is equal to, so when x is this, y is going to be 3e to the minus 2 ln 3. Um, do you know what? It probably would have been easier... What should I have done? No, okay, let's stick with this. I've gone this route. So it's going to be 3e to the... Now, I can't undo this exponential as it is, so I need to write it as ln 3 all to the power minus 2. Because this becomes 3 times 3 to the minus 2. Because if I'm finding e... To, if I'm doing e to the power of ln, it basically cancels out. Um, because they're inverse operations. So then this becomes 3 times 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 9, and I'm going to get 1 third. So the point of intersection, let's just check the question right at the top. Yeah, it does say a singular point. We rejected the other one. The point of intersection, well, we've got it. I'm just going to write, the, I'm going to write it as a conclusion. So it's going to be minus 2 ln 3, or, or equivalently 2 ln 3rd, and then a third. Just trying to think, is there any easy way of doing that last bit? Um, I think we could have substituted it. Yeah, maybe it was easier to substitute it into this one. 1 minus 2 e to the half x, because we had that half e to the half x was a third. So 1 minus 2 times e to the half x is 2 times a third. 
and that would have got me a third a lot quicker. So I kind of chose the wrong one there. I don't, hey, I don't regret it. I did it and I showed that we could do it that way. But do think carefully about which ones to substitute it into. This is a bit, there's some more technical details going on here.